Welcome back to another episode of Big Bear Boston Convo, episode number 61. The conversation I want to get into today is Jerome Boots Ennis and Gary Antoine Russell becoming the new superstars of the sport of boxing. Let's get into a few short clips on what Steve Fulton had to say in the development of Jerome Boots Ennis and also what Gary Russell had to say in becoming a superstar. Just lastly, too, man, Jerron Ennis. What's the, what do you think of that kid and working in the gym with him all these years? <laughs> he a beast. Yeah. You feel like he beat either of the guys fighting tonight, Sean and Terrence? I feel like, yeah, I feel like, yeah, hell yeah. And I say that because not that we're from Philly. I've seen, I've been around, I've seen him train. His uh, reflexes, his defense, his punch output, his stamina. You don't even see the guy sit down in the corner, right? Mm -hmm. And he's young. He's hungry. They don't. They wouldn't give him an opportunity, and I understand why. I'm not, I'm not saying like give him an opportunity, but I understand why. Because if that was me, like would I have given the opportunity? I mean, I would have, because that's just how, who I am. But it's like I don't know. <laughs> is his is his defense as on point? Because it seems like he hasn't had to have it on point as much, and he's trying to look spectacular, right? He's he's sometimes you're gonna get touched when you're trying to get a guy out of there. Um, but you think it, you know, just we nitpick when guys. Are as great talent as he is. You look for holes. Is is that defense you think gonna be as on point as the offense? The is defense he... is gonna be on point as the offense. I feel like sometimes his defense be he be so in shape that he'll get there faster than his opponent and may get caught with something dumb. Oh well, look, I'm <laughs> stand, stand right here. I'm ecstatic. Uh, right <laughs> feeling blissful right now. And, um, thank you for sharing the time to even interview me. Uh, I'm a humble person. Like I said, I still tell people I'm definitely a superstar. Based off of how the fight went, I'm glad I got the victory. Uh, I did what people haven't done. Two victor posters. You had Terrence Crawford. He's undisputed. You have Josh Taylor. He got all the titles. Neither one of them could stop him. I was the only one that stopped him. Them was his two only losses. I made it his third loss and I stopped him. You know, that's a statement. So you heard what Steve Fulton had to say in the development of Jerome Boots Ennis and also you heard what uh, Gary Antoine Russell had to say about himself becoming a star and uh, just a proud moment for him uh, he's only I think he's 25 he stopped Victor Postal which uh, Josh Taylor didn't stop him and uh, Terrence Crawford did not stop him so that's a huge accomplishment but the but the main topic of this video are these two guys going to be the future stars of the sport of boxing so let's go ahead uh, and break down Jerome Boots Ennis and his development, also his stars, his future star status, and also Gary Antoine uh, Russell, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna break him down as well. So let's go ahead and get into uh, Jerome Boots Ennis. So Jerome Boots Ennis will get better with time. Um, I think that his defense, you know, the tougher the tougher the fight gets, I think he will be at more of a heightened sense, and a lot of times you, it puts you on your A game. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things that I'm seeing from this this guy outside of the ring as, as far as like interviews and stuff like that. He's always around the gym. He's he's always training. He's always like like Steve Fulton say. He's always in shape. Um, and and he's so fast and uh, you can you can tell he's very intelligent inside and outside of the ring. He carry, carry, carries his, himself like a champion. Uh, there's a couple things that I want to see as far as uh, you know once he actually reached that pinnacle and actually obtained some of them belts. Uh, you know, is he going to still be the same hungry fighter as he, you know, as he is now? A lot of times when you start with something, you you know, just like YouTube, I'm, I'm hungry right now. But a lot of a lot of times, a lot of channels fall off because they lose that hunger and that passion and they keep getting them every single day and um, doing what they love. So it, it's just like the sport of boxing of life in general. I think Jerome Boots in his house has a ton of upside. I don't, as far as right now, I like everything that I'm seeing from him. Um, a lot of people want to say, hey, he get hit, he get touched a lot. He does. He does. He take he take a lot of unnecessary shots by taking risks. Um, but I, I think with time and, and patience, I think he's going to learn what to do, when to do it, and, and and how to do it, and how to execute it without taking uh, too bad of a shot. Because a lot of times when you start jumping up in, in competition, you're not going to knock everybody out. You're not going to hurt everybody with a body shot or uh, some kind of awkward shot or something like that. Um, you know, fighting somebody like Terrence Crawford or, or Errol Spence, uh, maybe somebody like... Uh, I think a good fight for him to actually showcase how good he truly is is uh, Victor. I mean, not Victor Ortiz, but Virgil Ortiz. I think that's that should be a fight that's coming up for, for him. Um, I think even before becoming a um, a champion, I think that's a good fight for both of those guys to test themselves. Even though I do see uh, Jerome Boost Ennis actually knocking out Virgil Ortiz, um, 
I, I don't know what I can't say what round, but I really do see him knocking him out. And I think his only two challenges in the welterweight division will be Errol Spence if they did actually decide to stay down um, at, at 147. Errol Spence and um, Terrence Crawford. I think that's his only that's his biggest test. Uh, but you know, for him to get there, he has to take like the Virgil Ortiz fights. He has to take maybe a couple other fights. And um, like I say, when you're a top dog, you get to pick and choose who you want to fight. And a lot of times it comes down to just business and timing. And I think that his time is coming sooner than later. And I think as long as he stay patient, stay focused, stay in the gym, not worry about what the naysayers are saying, uh, calling him overrated or whatever, you know, you call him what you want to, but he's he's that guy right now. He's that up and coming that everybody, uh, they, 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 they watch him. Errol Spence, everybody know the risk it's going to take to actually fight a uh, guy like this. He's very dangerous. He's, he's a switch hitter. He can, um, there's a lot of things that he can do inside the ring that I haven't seen in, in quite some time since. You know, since Roy Jones Jr., that's what he reminds me of. But he has that Floyd May- uh, Mayweather mentality as far as being around his gym and training and learning. And uh, you know, it seems like he's he's very humble, and, and and I really like that. I think that, like I say, as long as he can stay true to the game, I think that, that the sky's the limit for him becoming a household name. Once you become a household name, and you you see yourself on uh, pay per view, he's already on uh, Showbox. I, I think Showbox, Showtime, think the same thing. But uh, that's that's still you know you still fighting on cable TV, so that's that's a good start for him, and and I see nothing but good things for him. But let's go ahead and get into Gary Antoine Russell. Uh, I think this kid right here is dangerous at 140. He is. I think like I, I just had a video last night, so you guys, uh, well, it's not last night. It, it was the before this video. But go back and watch that video and um, see what I had to say about him um, in, in that manner. But I think that this kid is going to be super dangerous. I think he's uh, working on star status. And I think in some regards, he's going to become a champion just because of his situation and his weight class. I think he's going to become a champion before uh, Jerome Ennis. But I think that I think right now he could beat Josh Taylor. I think right now he could beat uh, uh, Regis Prograde, um, T.O. Fimo. And I think that one of the big super fights, I think, at 140 could be potentially him and Javante Tank Davis, which will be a very tough fight. And if Devin Haney was to come up, I think he beats Devin Haney. Um, I like Devin Haney. I think he's super skilled, but I think that Devin Haney, he also gets touched a lot, which he will probably clean up uh, the, the older he gets. And, and um, you know, like I say, in a sport of boxing, you really can't help when you get hit. That's that's the, You wouldn't even get in the ring if you weren't going to get hit. So that's that's a crazy excuse that a lot of uh, casual fans, they kind of come up with. Well, he got touched, you know, whatever. But that, that doesn't really mean anything in the sport of boxing because that's, what, that's your job is to get hit and hit back. It just depends on how, how good you want to work on your defense and all that other stuff, to, you know, to limit how much you get hit. But I think that this kid right here can almost beat anybody at 140. Um, I think he'll go to war with Javante Tank Davis. Um, he, I think his body size, everything about this dude right here, man, he is um, he's going to be different. I think he's going to be hard to deal with. I think pressure fighting. Um, and, and he's the same size. I think he's, I think he's like 5'8". So he's going to be bigger than Javante Tank Davis. I, I'm not sure about the, the reach on him, um, but I, I'm pretty sure he probably got him by a couple inches. But other than that, I think this kid, he's like a bigger version of his uh, older brother, uh, Gary Russell Jr., which I said in the last video. Uh, so this is almost more like an extension, but I kind of added uh, Jerome Boots Ennis in there. I thought it was it was key. You know, both of these guys are going to be household names if they, you know, as long as they keep up what they're doing, and uh, keep putting guys away like they doing. Anytime that you can be a knockout artist like that, you you're going to be a superstar. Uh, if if they in the right uh, type of situation, but I think that um, I don't really see anybody beating him at 140. Maybe he'll have a more of a tougher time if he actually went up there to 140 uh, 147, which we would I would love to see a rematch between him and um, Jerome Boots Ennis, which I would kind of pick uh, Ennis to kind of beat him now. Uh, but it just depends on the, the development and, and what we see from each fighter as they get older. But I think that uh, both guys are tremendous uh, talents, and I think they, they got so much room to grow. Um, but I think that I don't, like I say, I don't really see anybody. And you guys can, like I say, this this, this channel is not about who right, who wrong, or whatever. You you get into the comments. You let me know what you, what you guys think. And I think you guys do a good job with that. But do you guys really picture anybody beating... Um, Gary Antoine uh, Russell. I, I don't, I can't really say, I, I, don't, I don't really see anybody. Even, like I say, I think he, I think he knocks out uh, 
I think he kind of goes to war with Regis Progray. I think he may stop him. And, and plus, uh, Regis Progray really ain't, he, he's really not that active. So it's, it's kind of hard to, you know, to say that, you know, that'd be a really tremendous fight. I, it would more on uh, Russell's part, but but not on uh, Progray's part. But I think that he will he will stop Josh Taylor. I think that he um I think he wins in the 12th round matchup between him and Devin Haney, and I think that he goes to absolute war with uh, somebody like Javante Tank Davis. If, 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 if like I say, this guy right here, if you want a dangerous fighter, if you want to test yourself, this is the guy to do it. Like I say, he's a bigger version of his older brother in Gary Russell Jr. And that both of those guys got fast hands. They very uh, technical. Um, but what I like about uh, him being only 25 years old, he's so humble. He's like an old soul, but he but he knows how to carry himself. And I think that he's already showing that he's got the champion mentality. And a lot of times that comes with training, being dedicated to the sport of boxing. But um, as far as both of these guys, I think, you know, maybe in a couple years, maybe, you know, maybe 20, 23, 24. Uh, I think that we may start hearing these guys and seeing these guys a lot more. Um, especially being on uh, as far as like ESPN noticing them, other uh, boxing channels on YouTube noticing them, and uh, just the fans understanding what these two guys bring to the safe table. But you guys let me know what you think about this topic down in the comments below. going to conclude another episode of big bear boston combo episode number 61 you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below about this topic and all the other topics that i bring up on my channel if you want to see what i'm wearing shop follow me on all social media platforms that i'm currently on links will be down in the descriptions below just want to thank you guys like i do each and every single video my channel is growing so fast and it's unbelievable that you guys have given me so much support and so much motivation to keep going but if you're old to the channel new to the channel Please make sure you watch the full video so you get the full breakdown of the content. Also, if you like the video, leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe, and also hit that notification bell. With all that out of the way, just want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Big Bear Boxing Convo.